chemical bonds are the relationships between atoms that hold together molecules or compounds. Out of the three subatomic particles that make up atoms, the protons, neutrons, and electrons, it is the electrons that play the major role in the formation of chemical bonds. In particular, it is the number of electrons in the outermost, or valent shell, of an atom that indicates how likely an atom will form a chemical bond with another atom. Matter always wants to be in its most stable state. An atom containing eight electrons in its valent shell is considered to be chemically stable and is unlikely to form chemical bonds with other atoms. Unstable atoms have less than eight valence electrons and will be more likely to react with other atoms in order to form chemical bonds with them and, as a result, more stable products. Because of these bonds, each atom will end up having eight valence electrons. The general rule that describes the stability of an atom having eight valence electrons is called the octet rule. An octet is a group of eight electrons. Remember that for most atoms, the maximum number of electrons that makes their electron shells full is eight electrons. You can think of the eight ball used in playing pool to help you remember the octet rule. The exception to the octet rule is in the case of hydrogen and helium. Hydrogen has only one valence electron, and helium has two. Both of these atoms have just one electron shell, the first electron shell that's closest to the nucleus, which can hold a maximum of only two electrons. So for both hydrogen and helium, they are stable when they have two electrons, not eight, in their valence shell. In order for atoms to become more stable, they will gain, lose, or share valence electrons through the formation of different chemical bonds. There are three common types of chemical bonds that we will review. Ionic, covalent, and hydrogen bonds. We'll focus on ionic bonds in this video. Ionic bonds form when an atom donates one or more of its valence electrons to another atom. The atoms that have lost and gained these electrons have now become positively and negatively charged ions. Ions with opposite positive and negative charges are attracted to each other and the attractive force that holds them together is the ionic bond. An example of an ionic bond is the formation of NaCl, which is sodium chloride or table salt. A sodium atom has 11 protons and 11 electrons, and is electrically neutral with a net charge of zero. Its electrons are distributed in its electron shells with two electrons in the first shell, eight electrons in the second shell, and one electron in its third or valence shell. Sodium has two options to achieve stability. It can gain seven more electrons to fill its third shell with a total of eight electrons, or it can lose that one electron hanging out in its third shell which will then leave eight electrons in its second shell, which now becomes its outermost valence shell. Atoms will take the path of least resistance. It is energetically more favorable for sodium to lose just one electron in order to achieve stability rather than gain seven electrons. So, after sodium loses its one electron, it now becomes a positively charged sodium ion with a charge of plus one, making it a cation. It still has 11 protons, but it now has 10 electrons. So there is now one more positive charge than negative charge. 
an atom of chlorine has 17 protons and 17 electrons. Its electrons are distributed in its electron shells with two electrons in the first shell, eight electrons in the second shell, and seven electrons in its third or valence shell. Chlorine also has two ways to become stable. It can lose the seven valence electrons in its third shell, leaving eight electrons in its full second shell, which is now its valence shell. Or it can simply gain one electron and add it to the seven valence electrons in its third shell to make a total of eight electrons. Again, atoms will take the energetically easiest route, so chlorine will gain one electron in its third shell rather than lose seven electrons. And where will this electron come from? Well, it just so happens that there are sodium ions in the neighborhood that are in the business of donating electrons. So after chlorine gains its one electron, it now becomes a negatively charged chlorine or chloride ion with a charge of negative one, making it an anion. It still has 17 protons, but it now holds 18 electrons. So there is one more negative charge than positive charge. The opposite positive and negative charges of the sodium and chloride ions pulls them tightly together in the formation of an ionic bond and the resulting compound of sodium chloride, or NaCl. Most ionic compounds are tightly packed solids and form a crystal of ions, which is an ordered, repeating arrangement of ions found in fixed relationships with each other. In the body, most ionic bonds form between ions packed together in the bones and teeth, giving them great strength. But even though ionic bonds can provide strength and support, they are weaker bonds in comparison to the stronger covalent bonds. Many ionic compounds can break apart or dissociate into their positive and negative ions in an aqueous or water-based solution. These ionic compounds are called electrolytes. Electrolytes are dissolved in body fluids and create areas of positive and negative charge difference inside and outside of a cell, and because of this are able to conduct an electric current. We'll be further exploring this electrochemical gradient in an upcoming video. In addition to sodium ions, some of the other common cations in the body include hydrogen ions, potassium ions, ammonium ions, magnesium, calcium, and two types of iron ions. In addition to chloride ions, some of the other common anions in the body include fluoride ions, iodide ions, hydroxide ions, bicarbonates, oxide, sulfate, and phosphate ions. We'll learn a lot more about the specific roles that these ions play in the body throughout the course.